Why, why does it, I didn't tell it to you. Stop that. Hey, I didn't realize you were there. Won't you be my neighbor? This is Francis Drake, sales around the world. In case you don't know who Mr. Drake is, um, he sailed around the world on a, in a canoe. A lot of people don't know that. He did it in a canoe. What are you looking at? My dog's just staring at me. Apologize. This is Epic History TV. We're going to watch the video right now. If you've never heard of this guy, it's because it's fake news. But let's watch it anyways, because I'm pretty sure it's accurate. This is an Epic History TV Simple History Collaboration. Supported by our sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. Oh, I didn't. I didn't I'm drinking In cherry. In the 1560s and 70s, Protestant England under Queen Elizabeth was the bitter rival of Philip II's Catholic Spain. Philip ruled over a vast New World Empire that produced a fortune in gold and silver for the Spanish treasury. The English looked on with envy. Though England and Spain weren't technically at war, Elizabeth secretly supported English pirates and smugglers who set out to get rich at Spain's expense. Of course. Amongst them, Francis Drake. Drake had made several voyages to Spain's New World Empire, where he'd sold African slaves and raided ships and settlements. In Panama, he'd climbed a tree to get a view of the Pacific Ocean, and dreamed of becoming the first Englishman to sail it. His chance came in 1577, when the Queen entrusted him with a secret mission to raid the Spanish Empire's Pacific coast. On the 13th of December... When I first started EVE, I was a miner. And I was really tired of getting blown up by people all the time. Me too. Hated it. Got your nachos ready, I hope. On the 13th of December, Drake sailed for the New World with five ships and 164 men. En route, Drake's fleet captured several Spanish and Portuguese ships as well as a Portuguese navigator who knew the South American coast and became their guide. Come on, computer. After a rough crossing of the Atlantic and 63 days without sight of land, Drake reached the coast of Brazil. He struggled south in heavy seas to reach Puerto San Julian by June. Here, he decided to wait out the winter storms. <clears throat> 58 years before, Magellan, leader of the first and at that time only expedition to sail around the world, had wintered at the exact same place. Drake's crew even found grisly remains of the men Magellan had had executed here for mutiny. By coincidence, Drake also put on trial one of his leading officers here, Thomas Doughty, and found him guilty of trying to sabotage the expedition. He too was executed. Drake, by now down to just three ships, continued south. He made a smooth passage of the Magellan Strait in just 16 days, during which he renamed the Pelican, his flagship, the Golden Hind, a tribute to Sir Christopher Hatton, one of the expedition's sponsors, and his coat of arms. In September, Drake and his men became the first Englishmen to reach the Pacific, where they were met by 52 days of hurricane winds and mountainous seas. One ship, the Marigold, was lost with all hands. Another, the Elizabeth, sailed back through the strait and fled for home. Only the Golden Hind was left, driven south towards Cape Horn and into the world's roughest seas. Europeans believed a great southern continent lay in this region, 
but Drake saw only more ocean. There was no southern continent here, but there was an open sea route around the tip of America, one which would later bear his name. Huh. The winds eventually eased, and Drake sailed north, hoping to barter for supplies with local tribes on Mocha Island. But they mistook Drake's men for the hated Spanish, and attacked. Two of Drake's men were killed, and he himself was badly wounded. Wow. Despite this setback, Drake had now arrived at the Spanish Pacific coast which was virtually unguarded, and had received no warning of his approach. It was the start of one of the greatest robbing sprees of all time. <laughs> First, he hit the Spanish port of Valparaiso, where he took Chilean gold and wine. Then Arica, where he seized 40 bars of silver. At El Callao, he robbed every ship in the harbour, but more valuable than any loot, he was told that the Spanish treasure ship Nuestra Señora de la Concepción had sailed north just two weeks before. Drake set off in pursuit, and overtook the Spanish galleon off the coast of Ecuador. The Spanish crew had no reason to fear an English pirate in the Pacific. Such a thing was unheard of. So when the Golden Hind opened fire, they were taken completely by surprise, and quickly surrendered. In the galleon's hold, Drake's men found 36 kilos of gold, 26 tons of silver, 13 chests of silver coin, jewels, and a golden crucifix. A haul worth today around sixty million dollars. The hell they find it? The Golden Hind, using Peruvian silver for ballast, continued up the coast, stopping off to raid Huatulco in modern Mexico for supplies. For the last few months, Drake had been desperately hoping to rejoin the Marigold, unaware of her destruction in the Southern Ocean. Now he was forced to accept that the ship and his comrades were lost, and headed up the Pacific coast, hoping to find a theoretical northwest passage back to the Atlantic and England. Mm -hmm. Drake may have sailed as far north as Vancouver Island, wow. before giving up and returning to land in California, which he named Nova Albion, New Britain and claimed on behalf of Queen Elizabeth. Oh, that's nice. The English were welcomed by local Miwok Native Americans. The English thought they were being welcomed as gods. But it's possible that with their pale faces, they were instead seen by the Miwok as ancient spirits returned from the dead. <laughs> Drake's men spent five weeks making repairs to the Golden Hind because they knew there was now only one way home. The Spanish in South America were on high alert. And if a Northwest Passage did exist, Drake had failed to find it. So he would sail west, across the vast Pacific Ocean, and circumnavigate the Earth in order to get home. Drake set sail on the 23rd of July, 1579. For 68 days, they had no sight of land, but then finally reached Palau, and then the Philippines. They sailed on to the Spice or Malu. Imagine how you feel when he's like, we're just going to sail west, and you're at day like, 66 and you're like this guy is full of shit man just kill him and then the next day you spot land <laughs> oh wow Uku islands and added priceless cloves to a cargo that was already worth a fortune but as the golden hind set off for home 
disaster struck. Uh -oh. Beyond sight of land, in deep water, the ship suddenly hit a reef and stuck fast. The sailors thought they were doomed. They threw cannon and some of their priceless cargo overboard to lighten the ship oh no. and prayed to God. Twenty hours later, in what seemed to Drake's men a miracle, winds and tide lifted them off the reef. Oh, oh no. The Golden Hind continued to thread its way through the islands of Indonesia, and after a two-week stop in Java, Drake set sail across the Indian Ocean. In June, he rounded the Cape of... Did he know where he was then, once he started encountering these other places? Good Hope, and put in at Sierra Leone for fresh supplies. <clears throat> Without further incident, he reached Plymouth on the 26th of September 1580, with 59 surviving crew. His cargo of gold, silver and spices made a fortune for Drake and the investors in his voyage. Their return was an estimated 4,600%. Wow! Queen Elizabeth was one of those to profit handsomely from his success. And the following year had Drake knighted aboard the Golden Hind in London. Not bad. Drake's remarkable Explore the mighty Mississippi River with American Cruise Lines. Known for it's grand antebellum thing. estates, historical battlefields, and exquisite regionally inspired cuisine. Not the same as sailing around the world, though. Drake's remarkable voyage made him the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe. He would go on to win even greater fame with a leading role in the defeat of the Spanish Armada eight years later. Sir Spence. Francis Drake today remains one of England's greatest naval heroes. Oh, Sir Francis Drake was a busy man, wasn't he? <laughs> Drake's daring expedition is part of a story of human exploration that goes right back into prehistory. If you want to find out more, why not start a free trial with the Great Courses Plus? Okay. That was interesting. It's pretty good. I have to do a Magellan one sometime. Well, uh, this is a short one. My... Man. Sorry, my cord's all wrapped around my... I'll get it. So I'm going to go ahead and end this here. This is a short one. Hope you appreciate it. Understand if you don't, but still interesting. So I'm going to end it here and uh, like and subscribe and have a good day. Have a good night.